Hello everyone and welcome to exam B. In this video, I am going to talk about the descriptive answer writing for NABARD IT phase 2. So many of you were in the confusion that uh, what is basically the descriptive paper, how we have to attempt it. And on top of that, the questions that are asked in descriptive English, uh, descriptive uh, IT writing are very easy. Means they are appealing and you know about the topic. Then how to attempt these kinds of questions when they actually come in the paper. So one by one, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this video series forward with two questions in every video. So I will show you the two questions per descriptive uh, uh, questions that are asked in the exam of 2022 and 2021. So overall, you will have 12 questions, means six video, where every video will have two questions each with a sample answer. So what you can do? I will show you the question. I will show you how to write an answer. And after that, you can make points out of that and can try to write similar kind of thing. You don't need to just copy paste what I have written here. You just need to pick up some point, frame your own kind of answer, which you can remember in the actual exam. So now let's begin with the questions. So the first question here for uh, NABAD IT is from 2022 EO. This question is for the 10 marker. That is, what is SDLC model? Explain about it phases. So now the question is saying, first explain about the SDLC model and then explain about the phases that are involved in our general SDLC model. The type of every model is different, but yes, every model has some certain phases which are mandatory and there in the question, you have to talk about that thing. So this is the crux of the question. The soul of the question is asking you this. Now, how to write an answer because you try to reach at least 250 words here. So, I am not giving you a lengthy answer which cannot be accomplished uh, in that uh, frame of time. I am giving an answer which even you can type in the actual exam. Now, what is the software development life cycle should be your first agenda when you start your answer writing. Before beginning any question, you should be giving a small introduction which is good enough to make a good impression. So here what you are going to do, you are going to uh, identify what is a SDLC model in short one or two line and then you are going to put all the phases which are involved in the SDLC model. So now if I am an examiner and I, I will look at your question, I will suddenly get an idea, immediately get an idea that okay, these are the uh, things that the particular aspirant is trying to convey. So I will get an idea that, okay, you know about this topic and your answer is pretty much visible to me because you are using bullet points to explain the phases, to write the phases. So yes, this will be the best thing to grab the attention of the examiner to write a good answer. Now, how the SDLC work? You would just have to explain how this exactly work. You have explained about the introduction. Now, what is exactly doing uh, or is actually done in SDLC model. So here you will write about that particular thing that why it is needed, what are the purpose and how it actually works. Okay, you can just pause the video, take the screenshot for your sample answers and then you can read at the end also. Okay, now after this, you will explain about the stages and best practices and then you will explain about the models on which the SDLCs are based. Then you will explain about the benefits of the SDLC at the conclusion. So this will be your conclusion. Now, the first particular uh, PPT that I showed to you, there you are having a brief kind of a uh, kind of paragraph based answer. Here you are having points in the manner which are like uh, written in the pointed manner. Now, tell me which is more readable. The second slide, which is currently on your screen, is the most readable slide. So try to make your answer with the points, have proper gaps so that the examiner can read actually what you are trying to convey and they don't struggle to give you marks. They will be very happy because they understood what you are going to convey and then they can understand and give you marks according to the answer and the best evaluation will happen, trust me. So now, once you are done with this much, you can stop writing this answer. You will have good enough word limit. On top of that, your answer is complete. Now you can go and attempt the next question. At the end, when you are done with all the questions, you can come back to this particular answer. Now, if you want to explain one or two line about waterfall, agile, iterative, V-shaped, big bang and spiral model, you can do so. You can just insert a line and you can do all these things. So here, what is the exact point? The point is, you complete your answer, but if there is any time which is 
like left after the exam where you are done with all the uh, four questions out of six questions if you have let's say some time and you want to increase the words for your answers which you have already answered then with this particular base uh, or you can say with this approach you can actually add directly you won't uh, for like uh, you won't struggle to find a space where you actually have to insert your answer you can just insert one line after waterfall agile and so on with the spiral and you can increase the word limit as well still your answer will be pretty much readable your idea will be clear and your agenda will be clear and definitely you will get good marks when i say good marks it is more than seven or seven now the second question what is the dynamic memory allocation in c and explain uh with the functions that are used in c okay so this was a 15 marker question now here first you will explain what is memory allocation which happens with the machine give an introduction what we actually mean by memory allocation then explain about the static and the dynamic one and then how dynamic is needed in c basically and also in other sort of uh, programming languages so here first you explain about uh, the memory allocation then static memory allocation then kind of a difference between static and dynamic memory allocation and then you quote a situation with an array in the third paragraph that why we actually need dynamic memory allocation because we need to increase or decrease the space during the runtime that's why we came with this concept of the dynamic memory allocation in c now allocation and deallocations both are the part of dynamic memory the name is dma but actually the allocation and the deallocation both the part of this particular dma feature so you are going to explain the features which are involved in which header libraries they are involved or they are incorporated so first you will write that okay malloc calloc reloc free these all are the functions which are used to allocate and deallocate during the runtime after that you have to explain that what all the systems are there in the memory so we have static memory with the stack with the global variables and with the instruction and we have dynamic memory with the heap now you are going to explain that you know the entire concept of dynamic memory as well now when you have the heap segment with you which is dynamically allocating the memory during the runtime now you can explain calloc malloc free and realloc so this will completely uh, like define whatever is asked in the question if you look back to the question whatever is being asked in the question you have answered it well now again you will start uh, writing this uh, answer you will finish this answer and you will go to the next question you will attempt the third question you will attempt the fourth question and at the end definitely you will have some time now if you want to come back and write and add some more lines to your this answer you can easily do it you can just write the calloc malloc re realloc syntaxes with an example and that will be very appealing that will show that you don't have only the theory knowledge you have the practical aspect also so now the point that i want to take from this particular answer is that whenever you get a chance to incorporate any piece of code with the syntax do it because it will actually help your answer look way better than others so always try it if possible it is like in the previous question it was not that possible but let's say for this question it is possible let's say if there is a question on sql query it is possible to write a sql query give given some sort of scenario so think on that matter try to quote examples as much as possible and if they are related to the programming question try to incorporate some kind of syntaxes so that the examiner get a better idea that you have the theoretical knowledge on top of that you are good enough to do a practical implementation that is the actual application of the context in the industry so yes these were the two question for this particular descriptive uh, it nabard solution sample answers you can just still pause the video wherever you felt uh, that i was fast you can still take a screenshot and then you can also frame your own answer but yes the base should be like this only so these were the ideas i think uh, you will get a better idea how to write the answers to get a very good marks okay so in the next video i'm going to bring some more two questions and so on this particular series will happen for six videos so you can have all those videos and then uh, just before the exam or whenever you feel like writing and descriptive answer you can just refer these videos and can get benefited from this i hope you like this video if you do so please hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel if you are still watching it in an unsubscribe mode 
hit the bell icon so that you can get regular update from our side and to prepare 50 percent faster with high exam b you need to check out our course which is available at www.ixambi.com. Also, if you have any query, write it in the comment section or you can reach out to us at the mail which is shown on your screen and on the number which is flashed on the screen. So that was all for today. See you in the next video.